America is the land of bright lights and broken dreams. A place that delights and inspires a hunger for fame. It's also a place that some people find hard to leave, even after death. My name's Gail Porter and I'm a skeptic. My name is Chris Fleming and I am a sensitive. It's my mission to investigate alleged sightings and hauntings of Hollywood ghosts. A sensitive can detect paranormal events beyond the range of the five senses. I wouldn't say I'm a non-believer, but I'm definitely a skeptic. Together, our mission is to investigate the dead famous. Our search for the spirit of Buddy Holly would take us on an emotional journey into the paranormal. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. From the eeriness of the haunted cemetery he's buried in. I touch her face. And I hope she's all right, because I haven't even heard from her yet. To the site of his last ever performance. <laughs> Before ending in the cornfield where he met his untimely end. Okay, most of them were screaming, definitely. Would we find Buddy's ghost amongst the desolation of America's Midwest? I wasn't to know what lay ahead. Nope, they don't want me yet. I'm running up for dead bodies. Perfect atmosphere for the dead. I can get watched. I promise you, I can get watched. Buddy Holly changed the world of music forever. In a stunning career, Buddy created a sound that is still influencing musicians today. Yet his music career was cut tragically short. By a plane crash when he was just 22. From that'll be the day to Peggy Sue, every day, true love ways and heartbeat. The music of Buddy Holly has achieved immortality. Behind us on this bare plot of land is where Buddy Holly was born. His house has since been knocked down and all that remains here is the memory of where the legend began. Our search for the spirit of Buddy Holly would take us to all the places that were important to him, from here in Lubbock where he grew up, to the surf ballroom in Clear Lake, Iowa, where he had his last exhilarating concert, and the desolate cornfield where the plane crashed and his body lay undiscovered for hours in the snow. Will the spirit of Buddy Holly be tempted back to give us one last performance? Lubbock, Texas was not particularly famous until Charles Harden Holly, known to everyone as Buddy, blew away the cobwebs with a sound that is still reverberating around the world today. Being the older brother of Buddy was like being a, I don't know, <laughs> trying to be a role model, but actually trying to live up to him, too. It was uh, quite amazing to have uh, a younger brother so much uh, outshine all of us. I was a little bit uh, flabbergasted that uh, the little kid that used to be such a pest was now somebody to look up to. Born and buried here at the tragically young age of 22, these are the streets where Buddy spent his formative years, among the people who inspired him and his music. If you ask about how people portrayed Buddy in the early days, and we did not use the word nerd in the 50s, if we did, that's what we would call him. They don't mean that as anything bad, it's just that Buddy wore glasses. In high school and all, he was in no clubs, he was in no sports, he didn't participate in things like that. The only thing you would see Buddy on around town publicly would be when he's performing somewhere. So, yeah, I guess the word fit. From the schools he attended, to his old recording studio, to the cemetery he was buried in, to the places where he performed. It was clear that his hometown would make the ideal starting point for our investigation. To find out more, Chris and I went our separate ways to meet the people of Lubbock whose lives are still touched by the man himself. I started with Rick Bigham, a Buddy fan who has spent $70,000 restoring his Chevrolet Impala. 
Chris went to the Buddy Holly Centre to meet up with one of Buddy's oldest friends, musician Jack Neal. Why do you think he would have chosen something like a Chevrolet Impala? His first recording contract was, was with Coral Recording Studios. Okay. Uh, that, or that was a contract. And so that's why his producer thought this would be a good color for him, to drive a car that kind of promoted him and that record contract. If you could sum up Buddy Holly in just a couple words, what would that be? I'd say, Buddy, you did it. You said you would, and uh, you accomplished it. I'm sorry you're not here to really be in person to see it. What do you think, if Buddy Holly came back today and saw this car, how do you think he would react? Mm. Uh, Buddy was just not much on things. He didn't have a real fancy guitar. He didn't have a, a real fancy car. What were you doing when he died? I was uh, out on the job working, and uh, one of the guys uh, come out to the job, and he said, I just heard on the news that uh, your good friend was killed in a plane crash. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I went straight home to uh, catch the news to be for sure that it was true. I was hoping all the time that it was someone else, but uh, it was a sad, sad part of my life, uh, losing a dear friend. Wow, it's got great color interior. It's coral all the way. Now, you know that we're looking for the spirit of Buddy Holly, and I don't know Lubbock at all. I've just arrived. Where do you think is the best place for me to go? I think maybe get right down to the, the very basic of it. Might be uh, at his gravesite at, at uh, Lubbock Cemetery. So we were to start where Buddy's story ended, in the place where he's buried, the city of Lubbock Cemetery. Would we find his ghost there? After doing some research, I discovered that the cemetery is feared by many of the Lubbock locals, as it is believed to be haunted. There are many stories about the angel. One of the most interesting to me is that if a genuinely sincere Buddy Holly fan comes out with the prod to the cemetery and has the properly respectful attitude, the angel will flap its wings. I felt it was worth Chris and I paying a visit. There's a lot of stories about Buddy's spirit, not only associated with his gravestone over there, but also associated with this angel up here. And one of the really weird stories I heard was that a lot of the Lubbock teenagers used to have this really weird initiation ceremony. Well, I was hearing about that. I heard this morning that some of the locals were telling me they would start at the entrance there, the legend has it, and run all the way to the angel, touch its feet, and it would start to shed tears of blood. Yeah. I don't know about that. What do you think? Well, you know, I've heard a lot of stories and seen in papers that religious icons, such as angels or different other figures, will shed tears, whether it's blood or whether it's just water. So this could be one of them. Throughout history, statues have been known to either cry or weep human blood. Believers have put this down to religious enigmas, miracles that were only made possible by unknown forces. In order to discover the truth behind the myth, we decided to reenact the initiation ceremony so many Lubbock teenagers had done. This meant running from the gate to the statue, a distance of 300 yards. What were we to discover? Would the legends be true, and would the angel be weeping or flapping its wings in appreciation of Buddy? Okay, we're at the cemetery gate now. Are you ready to do this? All right, once you get there, then call me. Now come running next. Okay. All right. We'll we see how much of this, a legend. We have to do this separately. We have to do it separately because that's what the legend says. Okay. And don't forget when you get to the angel, you got to touch its feet to see if it bleeds or not. Touch its feet. And then look up at its eyes. Okay. And then call me. Okay. Well, right when you get up to the gate, start running. Because yeah. that's what the legend says is you got to be right at the gate. Should be all right, don't you think? Worst thing is, not wondering that the angel's going to um, be crying blood. The fact I'm in a deserted cemetery, 
Okay, I can't even see her now. She's gone. I don't like it. I don't understand why I always want to go first. Yeah, I hope she's all right, because I haven't even heard from her yet. I mean, it's not bad for her. Okay. I'm running up for dead bodies. I'm gonna start walking towards the entrance because I'm gonna have to run soon. She's gotta be there by now. I touch her feet. I didn't think I'd be this scared. But it's really, really spooky. There's no blood. Are you okay? Yeah, did you follow me in? No, I'm still outside. Could you come in then? Is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I heard the noise and I just got a bit of a fright. I just thought you'd come behind me, but I can't I can't see you. No, I'm not behind you. I'm still out here. Could you just run in, please? I don't like it. Are you at the angel? You're supposed to touch the angel's feet. I touched the angel's feet. I've walked around the angel. She's not crying blood, but drop my... Okay, I guess it's my turn now. Right, because I'm trying to talk to you and, and feel myself. Could you just come and join me, because I don't like it. All right, I'm on. We'll see if it works now. I might run over. <sighs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, but you said call me if you get scared, so what do I do? I thought I heard a noise. I call you and you ask me a bloody 101 questions. <laughs> How are you? What are you doing? What did you have for your lunch? Just come next time when I ask you to come, okay? Wow, you had endorphins running yes, for you. Yes, thank you. With so much folklore and paranormal stories associated to the cemetery and Buddy Holly's grave, we both felt we should investigate further. <laughs> oh, wow. I just felt that energy. Little did we know that such a dark energy lurked amongst the graves. No, nope, they don't want me in. <laughs> that even our psychic guests would be afraid of. God. Oh. Oh. Our investigation to see if the spirit of Buddy Holly lived on had brought us to Lubbock, Texas, his hometown and the place where he's buried. Chris and I had found ourselves following in the footsteps of local folklore to find out the truth behind the infamous angel statue and the rumours that Buddy's spirit has been seen at his graveside. Many stories about Buddy Holly's gravesite circulate. Kids go out there to pay tribute to a folk hero. And some of them say that they see ghostly figures they were sure that they had seen the youthful Buddy Holly. We decided to carry on the investigation at Lubbock City Cemetery to see if there was some truth in these stories. We'd invited along a local psychic and a witch's coven in the hope they could help us make contact with Buddy Holly. My name is Lena. My chef name is Wild Rose. I'm a Wiccan High Priestess. I have worked with the dead, for lack of a better, more charming word, for several years. My name is Leslie Stone, and I'm a self-described New Age flake, or a neo-pagan. I sort of take um, inspiration from both ends of that spectrum. I've brought along a few members of my coven. I think we have a good group that can pick up a few interesting tidbits. 
I connect consciously with the spirit world and I'm able to hear what they say. Sometimes I can smell them, sometimes I can see them. I really feel that we'll, we'll have some good fortune with talking to Buddy. I can feel a lot of energy here already. I was trying to see if I pick up anything following us. Because we're entering into the graveyard late at night, we might be waking up some spirits. I'm, I'm sure they don't get too many visitors here. Wild Rose was keen that we all formed a circle around Buddy's grave. By the powers of the gods that dwell within us and near us, we ask your blessing on each participant here. We've heard the music play in our hearts and souls. And we've heard the music play in our ears. Tonight, we want to hear it again. We want to feel Buddy Holly's presence and the presence of those others that are here in this place. We invite you to commune with us. Through touching Buddy's grave, the witches hope to pick up some of his energy and bring him forward. It appeared that someone or something did want to come into contact with us. However, I hadn't been prepared for that person to be me. It's a male. Yeah, it's definitely male. One of you are, are quite comical too. No, my hands are right here. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse Excuse you. Me. I definitely felt like somebody. Put, I honestly thought you pulled my, my hood down. No, I didn't. They're scaring me a bit by going on about my hair and stuff. Do you smell that? Smell like cigarette or to chewing tobacco. You smell that? Yeah, it is. I just smoked it again. Now well, it's gone. I walked right into it. It's chewing tobacco. Perfect atmosphere for the dead. The witches were growing nervous. They sensed black magic and alleged that an evil energy would not allow Bobby, one of the witches, onto the grass. Who doesn't want who in the cemetery? What happened? I don't know. They don't want somebody Bobby doesn't in want the me in the cemetery. Why? I don't know. I just keep feeling like I'm going to be pushed backwards. Where from? Is what you're sensing over here sort of, sort of dark and angry? It's angry, but it's a reserved anger. Like, it's not like he's lashing out. He's kind of like, it's building up. Mm -hmm. It's building up, OK? Um, he's, still, he's behind me. He's still behind me. He senses himself as a protector, and he's very angry about our presence here. So you want to come and walk, see how far you can get on the grass? Bobby still sensed a dark force stopping her from walking onto the grass. This right here's where it starts getting... No, nope, they don't want me again. It's OK, it's OK. It's OK. It's okay. I'm staying on the road. They don't want me again. Oh, wow. I just felt that energy. It's like it came right up to me in my face and then moved back. It's OK. It's OK. It's okay. I'm staying right. on the road. They don't want me You're in. All right. So it's like a fishing game. It, it feels like something stops me, like they don't want me to go any further. And then I actually feel like this. They're pushing me back. Really? I just have to stay on the either. road. There's someone following them. There's someone behind them now. Are you picking that up? Because I felt that I just saw someone walk right behind them. He doesn't like us here. That's He's it. not that's, real happy that's about that's this. Everyone sensed that the dark energy was growing stronger and more unwelcoming. You know, what's funny is I'm starting to see the corner of my eyes. Mm -hmm. People walking all over the place. There's in a lot out. of activity they'll, they'll, here. They'll pop in for a couple seconds and then they disappear, you know? Yeah. I can't move. Bobby wanted to leave the cemetery. However, she was now having difficulty walking anywhere. No. No. Oh, God. Oh, oh. You OK? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect it. It was clear she was unwelcome. <laughs> the only way back was to retrace her steps. <laughs> we'll walk around and we'll join you on the okay. other side. Yeah, we will. OK. This malevolent presence was obviously not Buddy. I went to find Chris. OK, 
I, I did feel like a load and load of pressure on, on Bobby. That's really strange. And they're all talking about all the spirit. Oh my God, oh no, no, is someone running? Is someone running? Is that... oh, oh, don't do that! Hello? Well, she hey, was girl. Going. You just gave me the fight of my, my life because I saw you running and I just saw this dark shadow running and I thought it was a ghost. I'm sorry, no, I tell you what, there's a lot of stuff around here. I'm getting a little freaked out too. Where is everybody? Uh, they're dispersed all over the place, so watch out. It had been a strange night, and I'd been concerned for Bobby's welfare. Bobby's been having real problems. She can't even come onto the grass, and I'm a bit worried about her, and I think we should move on. She's still over there? Yeah, All she's right, over well, there. let's go. And, uh, but we definitely haven't found Buddy's spirit, I don't think. A lot of other ghosts, but not <laughs> Yeah, <Bobby>. definitely. <laughs> the following morning, Chris and I met in what used to be one of Buddy Holly's favorite places to eat. to find out where we should go from here. There's only one place we can go to, and that's Iowa. Yeah, but why would you want to go back to somewhere where you died so tragically? Well, we have to go to the last place that he was at, OK, where he was happy. That was his last concert. And he died, he might still be hanging around there. We don't know. If not, at least I can maybe pick up what happened from there, his spirit, after he left his body. So we set off on our long journey to Iowa. Would we find Buddy Holly at the place he last performed? Or would we have more luck investigating the location where he died? Can you see a figure over there? <laughs> Our hunt for the spirit of Buddy Holly had started where he started, in Lubbock, Texas. This is the town where he was born and buried. We'd had no success finding his ghost here and decided to further our investigation and travel north to Clear Lake, Iowa. Famous not only for its farming community, but also as the site of the plane crash where Buddy died. If he came back today, I think he would be amazed at what's going on here. He never did uh, think that he would achieve this kind of fame. I don't know that he even wanted the fame. He just wanted to play and sing and create music. And I think that's what he would start into doing again as soon as, as soon as he was able to. We headed first for the surf ballroom, where Buddy played for the last time before boarding the aircraft for his fatal flight. The surf ballroom was just one stop on the infamous winter dance party tour that Buddy was taking part in to pay his bills while a dispute over his royalties dragged on. Preserved today like a time warp from the 50s, it is a venue revered by Buddy fans around the world. About the night at the surf ballroom, which was the last time, of course, Buddy gave his performance, he didn't like to be on that tour. It was a winter tour. It was 30, 35 degrees below uh, zero every night on the buses when they're traveling in between. He really didn't like to be there, but he needed money at the time, as the story goes, and that's why he was on that tour. I'll say this much from everybody I've talked to that saw him on the Winter Dance Party Tour said, but he gave 100%. What would we find here, and could it be Buddy? This is where Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper played their last ever gig before mm -hmm. they boarded that fateful flight. You know, it's weird when you think about it, you got three musical legends, they get on a light aircraft that goes to the next venue, and then they die some grisly death in a godforsaken cornfield. I know, and the worst thing is, they left here, and so, so many of their fans were actually leaving this venue, and they had no idea that their idols were lying dead in a field. I know, do you know they were only in the air for five minutes before their plane crashed? I know. One of those fans who packed into this ballroom for Buddy's final concert was Karen Leon who was then only 18. This is the seat I sat in during Buddy Holly back in February 3rd, 1959. The concert itself was just fantastic. Every one of them just played to their heart's content. I heard the plane crash on the radio the next day, and I had just gotten home from work and just couldn't believe it. You know, it just wouldn't be the same because 
most of the music you hear was Buddy Holly. I don't know, I still get kind of a lump in my throat. The surf ballroom has hardly changed since that fateful night. The original telephone where Buddy made his last call to his wife Maria is still intact, as is the green room where Richie Valens tossed a coin and won the last available seat on the plane to their next concert. To assist us in the investigation, Chris had invited along local psychic Sue Walker. When I go into buildings that have spiritual energy, it's immediately apparent. Um, there is an emotional sense, uh, a physical change sensation, a tingling. I'm hoping that by going into the surf ballroom and going where Buddy Holly went, that we'll be able to pick up a residue from uh, February 2nd, 1959. Darkness fell on Clear Lake and the surf ballroom, and the investigation began would Buddy come through for us? Buddy Holly, if you would like to come tonight and visit, we'd sure like to talk to you. Well, this whole area is potent. I mean, I just walk here and, and I've already got the hair standing up on the back of my arms. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. I, I keep wanting to grab the mic and go center stage and sing. That's part of what's going on here, but I don't know who it is that's asking to sing. Sue? Yes. Um, with me being a skeptic, yes. is there um, anything that I'm going to be able to see or, or well, hear? Or... Everybody perceives paranormal energy a little differently. Um, some people see it, some people hear it, some people feel it, um, some people sense a change of emotion or a change of um, electrical energy or a change of um, heat and cold, like um, when you were in the green room. Oh, what was yes. That like? Come on up. Sure We'd all definitely heard a whistling noise. Um, heat and cold, like um, when you were in the green room. Oh, what was yes. That noise? What was that noise? Hello. Come on up. Are there any spirits here that want to communicate with us? Anybody who's here who's been a past performer in the surf ballroom who's observing this, do us a favor and say something or sing something for us so that we can pick it up as an EVP. Would you do that, please? I'm getting all goose pimply now. Are there any spirits here that want to communicate with us? Yeah, I, I, I picked it up too. Right over here at the, at the entrance to the green room. Hello? Suddenly, Chris and Sue felt drawn to the green room. What is your name? Speak out to us so we know who you are. You're obviously making connection with us. Please speak to us. Oh man, I just got this huge goosebump brush. I mean, it just took my arms up. I think Sue's really good. Even if... Hello? Place. Well, it's pretty potent psychically. It really is. I feel like everything's moving in there. There's, there's something going on. I think there's something going on on the other side. I don't think it's here. Something's annoying me about the other side of the stage. I wouldn't do it. Feeling brave, I went to investigate where I'd heard the noises coming from. If I if I stand here and if I sit in the green room and I try and and get a sense of Buddy Holly, I just want to go home to my wife. That's the only, I just, I want to leave here. I don't, it's not that I don't want to perform for my fans, I do. But I want to go home to my wife. I want to go home to Texas warm. I want to get warm again. It's such a strange building because even though there's no one here, you get a distinct feeling of like, people sitting here and, and watching, watching people performing, but not modern day. I, I don't get a feeling of a, normal, like a concert that I would go to. I get this real kind of shining type feeling. 
you know, everyone all dressed up and I'm really getting scared. Really. What's that over there? Myself and the director were positive that we'd seen a figure. However, when looking back at the footage, there was nothing on the tape. Had this been our imaginations, or had we really seen something? Sure, some figure out there. No. Like a shadow. I really? promise you. I promise you. Wait, you? Wasn't really? really? I don't know. Over that way. I'm sure. Where? About there. Hello. It might just have been shadows. I might have just been scaring. Well, and it's possible. Wow. Yep. I just freaking. What's that? Don't laugh like a crazy person. <laughs> Yeah, no, stay in here. Okay, all right, here's, here's what you do. All right, the best way to, to describe this is stand here and, and feel, all right, this is more of a normal energy. Okay. Now, just go forward step by step until something different hits you. Okay, it's freezing cold right there. That's right. Okay. Look, there's no, there's no vent. That's right. Listen to the man standing here. That's where I saw a shadow. That's, that, and, and this is a, an individual who at one time had a, a great deal of uh, no, notoriety or, or fame. Um, Rich, Richard, Richie, um, uh, that, that first name sound. It's not Buddy, though. No, this one is not Buddy. Had the shadow that we'd thought we'd seen actually been Richie Valance, back to a place where he was last happiest? Or had it just been our imaginations, scaring each other in a dark, eerie environment? Did you see something? Yes. Sue alleged that it was Richie's spirit that she was picking up on. I used to be in the limelight, and I'd like to be in the limelight again, or I liked that feeling. It had been an eventful night, but we hadn't come into contact with Buddy Holly. However, there was one more tragic location that we needed to visit. Would his spirit live on in the bitter coldness and bleak isolation of a cornfield in Iowa? Okay, most of them were screaming, definitely. I feel like someone's behind me. It's an eerie place. It's an eerie place. It was a strange feeling trying to communicate with Buddy at the last place he performed, the surf ballroom in Clear Lake. And even though his spirit had not come through to us, psychic Sue Walker had been convinced that Richie Valance, who'd played and died with Buddy on that fateful night, had been present. Rich, Richard, Richie. The final stage in our investigation was to visit the cornfield where Buddy met his tragic end on that snowy night in February 1959. Looking like any other cornfield in this area of Midwest America, the spot is famous around the world as the place where the plane carrying Buddy Holly, Richie Valance and the Big Bopper crashed. The plane smashed into the ground at terrifying speed, breaking into pieces and scattering the bodies of the three musicians unceremoniously onto the field. The plane crashed roughly three to four minutes after takeoff, had not reached proper altitude yet. Something had to happen on that airplane. My belief, and I've talked to two friends of mine that are corporate pilots, and they agree with me, said the wings iced up. Now, when the wings ice up, two things happen. The ice on the wings adds weight to the plane, and that plane was right near maximum load as it was. And number two, you lose the shape of the wing. You lose the aerodynamics. You lose lift. The plane came down too quick after takeoff for anything else. Today, the tragedy is immortalized in Don McLean's song, American Pie, as The Day the Music Died. When I first heard about Buddy's death, I was working on a house here in Lubbock, and uh, I went home for lunch, and my wife met me at the door and said, you better get on your, change your clothes and get over to your mother's house that I just heard on the radio that Buddy had been killed in a plane crash. Still hurts. And it's a hard way to hear it. Oh, 
cold, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. Oh, it's so weird to think that that unassuming field was the scene of a tragic accident. So if we did come across Buddy mm -hmm. Holly, how would his spirit appear to us? Well, it depends on two things. One is what stage of development he is as a spirit or ghost. The second would be is what type of frame of mind would we want to see him as? And also for him, would it be as that's the last thing he remembers and he doesn't realize he's dead, so therefore he's going to look all mangled? Or Can is that he gonna... happen? It's happened before where some people have seen ghosts and they are still they look bloody or they're still cut up. Uh, it's very rare, mm. but that's because the spirit has not let go and they tend to form and manifest in that kind of form. Right. To find out about any paranormal activity occurring on the site, I'd arranged to meet the farmer who owns the land, Jeff Nicholas. Could you give me more details about what this place was actually like on the night that Buddy Holly died? The field is almost identical to the night uh, that the guys played at the surf and, and, and then met their fate here in, in the farm field. The fence line, the fence posts, and everything is just exactly as it was in 1959. The time that you spent on this field, have you ever felt like Buddy Holly's presence at all? Well, I spend a lot of time in this field, and both uh, during the day, and, and we harvest and, and work the ground lots of times at night. And there are times when, you, when you're out here and you just, you really feel the significance and, and, and understand and, and, and feel that Buddy's here. Jeff drove us down to the exact spot where the plane crashed. Would we find any evidence of Buddy's ghost here? Well, here we are at the crash site, and of course, this is the, the place that the music died. If you guys will look over in this direction, you won't, can't see it, but at night, you can actually see the directional beacons from the Mason City Airport where they, um, they took off. And uh, the plane actually uh, contacted the ground about 500 feet in this direction, skidded along the ground, right up into this area and then hit the fence line and uh, actually then the tail went up into the air. They weren't found until the, the, the following morning and uh, Buddy Holly was found outside the, uh, the fuselage Just over here. here. Yep. Goodness. How'd you feel now? I feel okay. I'm just kind of listening to his story, trying to tap into it and see if there's any energy here or anything that I can kind of dissect mentally and figure out what it is. Well, I really don't want to use any equipment, you know, namely the thermal scanner. I'm getting any readings of temperature changes. It's way too cold out here. But I would think the best thing is for me to just use my senses. Okay. and start probably at the point of impact. I think I'll go up to the bit where he actually died. Since Chris has gone to the bit where the, the plane came down. The last time I was in a field, oh, looking for ghosts or trying to find something, was um, James Dean. We went to an old oh, abandoned okay. airfield. And this feels much stranger. Right here, I'm sensing some sadness, which was right over here. Right here, right here. Which this means to me, okay, this, what the sadness is, the emotion, is that something traumatic happened. feeling after it hit over there, this may be the third time it hit here, and then it rolled a little bit and then it slid. What it's telling me right here is that one of the occupants of the plane died right here. 
which means was still alive from the impact. Spirit had not left its body yet until it was in this exact location. As for who exactly it is, whether it's Buddy Holly, is it Buddy Holly? No, is it the Big Bopper? Yes. So when his body ended up over there, he was already out of it. This is the actual place where Buddy Holly's body was found. He had apparently lost the majority of his brain. I don't know whether he lost his head or he just lost his brain, but some really gruesome tales. And the irony was that they, they took the bus everywhere on this tour. I don't like that noise. They took the bus everywhere on this tour, and for once, Okay, now I just got a feeling right now, you know how when you're on a roller coaster, you go down, your heart goes up into your, like your throat feels like it? It's kind of like with the impact. Okay, most of them were screaming, definitely. It just suddenly went like ultra, ultra cold and it went, I mean it's quiet, but it suddenly went deathly silent. I feel like someone's behind me. Is there anything behind me, that way? I feel like I'm getting watched. I promise you, I feel like I'm getting watched. Oh, big shadow, big shadow, big shadow, big shadow. Did you see that? It's okay, it's okay. Chris! Gail's calling us. All right, I figured that out. Let's go back here and then see what happened with the bodies. It's not right over there. It feels really eerie. Yeah, it's an eerie place. It's an eerie place. Well, we're standing around here. And then it's weird, because I was talking about Buddy Holly and how he died and what happened. And, and then it suddenly just went whoosh, silent. Chris felt there was definitely some energy here and was keen to move on to the spot where Buddy died. And what I'm seeing right now is, first he's thinking that he survived this thing until he sees someone standing over there. He sees someone standing over there. Buddy Holly, by seeing all them, he's like, oh, we all survived. Then at first, he looked, how could we survive that? He began to question himself. And then he looked over and he was drawn to this body, whenever to go see who it was, having a sick reckoning that, oh my God, that could be me, is that me? Realized that it was him, and then had the realization that he had died. We hadn't found Buddy, but we'd picked up his place memory and found some answers about his death. The investigation had come to an end. The following morning, we met to discuss our findings. I found this entire investigation quite not, depressing is not the word, but upsetting. Why? Well, he was such a young man, and we actually went to the place where he died, and all those bodies lay, mm -hmm. you know, un undiscovered for a whole night. I just think it was a little bit morbid. But I had to like the crash there, because I picked up what I believe was a place memory of Buddy. I can think back right now, just standing there, as if I was him, looking at the entire crash site, and seeing, you know, Richie Valens and Big Bopper go up into the light, and then seeing the pilot there, and just seeing the sorrow from the whole ordeal, but he kind of wanted to stay because of the sorrow, but he ended up leaving. He's gone. <laughs>